This is my Harbor Freight 3-in-1 mill lathe combo. And if you are seeing this machine for the very first time, this is likely your first visit to my YouTube channel. And that's okay. Welcome to the channel. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So it turns out that I've done so many modifications to this machine that trying to put them all in one video makes the video well over a half an hour long. I decided to break it into a two-part series. This is actually the second video showing the remaining upgrades. If you have not seen that first video, there will be a link down in the description. The next upgrade is not so much an upgrade to this machine as it is an accessory that I made for the machine, and that is this steady rest. I could not find a ready-made steady rest for this machine. I think I probably could have found one, like for, again, from a similar smithy that may or may not have worked. The issue was not mounting it on the ways. Those are fairly universal. That's why I was able to upgrade this cross slide. The issue was the height of the spindle. And different height spindles require a different height steady rest. I was able to put this together and make it so that it can easily be installed and easily be tightened down onto the ways and be used. We loosen the knob. Slide down over the edge. We tighten it down, it locks into place, and then I have these knobs to adjust the roller bearings that hold the work in place, make it steady so that you can cut larger pieces that are sticking way out. One of my more recent projects was buttoning up an electric brake on this. Because of the type of motor that I'm using, if you wire in a resistor that can be switched onto the motor, it gives you a braking action. So if I turn this on, when I turn it off, it comes to a stop almost immediately. There's a lot involved in that, especially with it being automated. The fact that it clicks on when I use this switch, this switch, or this switch. I've got a whole series of videos specifically on that project. The next upgrade is this component here and this electrical box down here and this part right here. This is all part of my ELS system. Now, if you're not familiar with ELS, that stands for electronic lead screw. If you look over there, we have the controls for my ELS. Basically, this machine came from the factory without the ability to thread. There was a bushing mounted right here that the lead screw rested in and nothing from here over. I got a Clow 42 ELS system, hooked up this stepper motor, have my brains and control panels down in this box down here. And this now allows me to thread on this machine. I can power up the system. You can see it says Clow 42 right there. Currently it's in power feed mode. And when we turn it on, you will see that this stepper motor starts to spin. And right away, it started spinning. Now this right here is a clutch that engages the stepper motor to the lead screw and allows me to connect it and disconnect it. There was a little bit of resistance from this stepper motor when using the hand wheels. And so that was the main reason that I put in the clutch. And as you can see, the lead screw is moving and so is the cross slide table. We turn it off, comes to a stop. If we go in reverse, begins pushing it out the other way. And that is actually the technique that I use when I am threading. Because of the fact that I don't have a traditional half nut or a half nut gauge that tells me where in the rotation the lead screw is, I cannot disconnect this clutch and still line up my threads in the middle of threading. 
So once I get everything set up and I begin cutting threads, I have to do everything with this forward and reverse control. This is a big part of why I added the electric break. Because now, let's say I'm making a pass and I'm about to thread something, I go forward, I get to the run out gutter, I turn it off because of the brake, it stops very quickly. I wind the cross slide table out. I go in reverse, get to where I need to make my pass, turn it off, wind it back in, and then I'm able to go into forward again. This ELS has power feed. It's totally dependent on the spindle speed and like I said, right now, that's the mode that we're in. We're not actually in thread mode, we're in power feed mode. But I wanted to have autonomous controls. I wanted to be able to control my lead screw just with electronics and not have to worry about what the spindle is doing. So I wired in a switch and an autonomous stepper motor controller to allow me to do just that. So if I flip the switch down here, and we're going to turn that down. This is my direction switch. Since it's close to the spindle, I want it to go that way. And we're just going to turn it on. And as you can see, it starts to move. And I can adjust the speed. I can turn it off. Turn it back on. We can even switch direction on the fly. This is a nice option where you can use these controls as a way to drive the lead screw without having to manually crank. Like I said, the ELS does come with power feed based on spindle speed, but I also wanted autonomous controls. The next upgrade, and this is the single biggest upgrade that I made to this machine, around on the backside is a treadmill motor. Now this machine originally came with a big AC motor and it was one size fits none. There was a pulley setup in here where you could change the belt between the motor and the spindle to give you three different speeds. And they were sorta works, kinda works, and doesn't work. Basically what we had was somewhere in the neighborhood of 1700 RPM 1000 RPM and 500 RPM. And the reality of it is I found that I would put it into one and I would make that speed work, which is not the correct way to do machining. If you know anything about machining, you know that speeds and feeds are everything. And controlling this spindle speed gives you the option to make the best possible cuts. So what I did is I got a motor out of a treadmill. It's a heavy duty motor. I set up a DC power supply for it, and I now have fine speed control and coarse speed control with these two knobs right here. So if we go ahead and turn it on, you can see it's really clipping, and now I can turn the coarse speed control to get it down to a slower speed, and if that's still not exactly where I want it, I can dial it in with the fine speed control. This all reads out on my RPM meter. This was something that I had to add. Obviously, with the original pulley system, you wouldn't need an RPM meter like this because the chart told you what the speed was based on which pulleys you were using. But I wanted something that gave me on the fly so that I knew exactly what the speed was. This is a decent RPM meter. There is a little bit of lag. As you can see, I turned that down a little bit ago and it's slowly coming into its own and getting to where the speed actually is. The Clow 42 ELS also has RPM on it. And that's a nice feature, but it does have to be turned on when using it. And a lot of times I'm using this setup without the ELS turned on. So that's the other reason I added a standalone RPM meter. I've shown you several controls on this box, and this is my master power box. When I originally got this machine, there was one switch, and it was right here. And it had forward, off, and reverse. And that was it. That was all the controls 
There was no safety stop. There was no variable speed. There was no master power. There was no autonomous ELS controls. So I put together this entire box so that I have all the controls easily accessible. This emergency stop, as far as I'm concerned, any machining equipment should come with something like this. With the machine on, you push that button, everything stops. You don't have to find a switch and flip it. You can just smack the mushroom and everything comes to a stop. Speed control, amazing. The treadmill motor was probably the single biggest upgrade that I made to this machine and having the ability to change RPM at the turn of a knob is a phenomenal thing. If you're interested at all in making any upgrades to your machine, that is the one that I would start with. If I was trying to use my ELS with the original minimum speed of 500, it would be so fast that I could only thread upside down. I could probably only do it backwards and going out because the runout gutter would have to be so big to not crash the tool into the shoulder. But with the treadmill motor, I can just easily turn it on and turn it way, way down if I so desire. Right now it's showing under 50 RPM. Again, this RPM meter is a little slow to catch up. Oftentimes I thread it pretty close to 100 RPM. So we have turning ability well below what I even need for threading. The last upgrade I'm going to show you is this right here, and this is treadmill motor number two. And the reason I put a secondary treadmill motor on this machine is because, as I said earlier, I had to chase some accuracy issues on this machine. Originally, the way it was set up, we had a belt coming up to the spindle. And then there was a clutch mechanism here on the end that you would slide in or slide out. And when it was in one position, it put the power from the motor to the spindle. When it was in the other position, it went into a conical gear that came up to drive the mill. When I would be making cuts, occasionally I would get a little scratch in whatever it was that I was working on. It was just a lack of consistency. And I could not figure out where that scratch was coming from. I improved my gib adjustments. By the way, the gib adjustments on this machine were terrible. I've got a video showing how I fixed that. That's not even on my list. I just remembered it. I went with the solid tool post. I did so many things to try and improve the cuts. And while they all made a difference, I would still occasionally get that scratch. And it turned out that it was slop in the clutch mechanism. Basically, due to tool pressure, you would get a little bit of a loading and unloading in the work, and that's what would cause the scratch. So I completely eliminated that clutch setup. I locked the system out. This made it a whole lot easier also for me to mount the ELS system because the encoder that drives the ELS is driven off the spindle. But I locked out that clutch and all of a sudden my cuts got way, way better. The problem is with a locked out clutch, you'd have to unlock it to drive the mill head. And I didn't want to do that. I thought it was a whole lot easier to add a second motor to the mill head and drive the mill head autonomously of the main motor. So the way this works is we go ahead and turn it on. And I have this switch down here. Now it is designed to switch both the power to the motor and the power to the RPM meter. So right now, 175, we are getting the RPM of the spindle. Switch it to the off position on this switch. Now let's go to the mill motor. We're now turning the mill, the motor's running smooth. The RPM meter, again, it needs a minute to catch up, but we are starting to get the reading. And it's all controlled with the switch. I could have set it up so that this had the automatic braking, just like the forward and reverse switch does. But that would have been a whole lot more wiring for a feature that I'm probably never going to use. I mean, 
if I'm going from the mill to the lathe, I'm going to turn it off, let it come to a stop, and turn the other spindle on. I'm never going to use this switch in an emergency situation. If it's an emergency situation, we're going to go there. So there was no real reason to add the braking to this switch down here. But the braking for this spindle also applies to this spindle. So let's go ahead and put it in the mill position. We'll turn everything back on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off without using the brake. As you can see, it takes quite a while to spin down. Now I'll use one of the three switches that is tied to the automatic braking system. And you can see it comes to a stop way, way quicker. So if I did have an emergency, had to hit the emergency stop, I would be able to do so and get this spindle stopped in a much timelier fashion. If you have any questions on this machine, don't hesitate to reach out. I would love to answer those questions. If there's anything else you'd like to know, put that down below as a comment and I will try and get it answered for you. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.